This episode of The Minimalists is brought to you by nobody, because advertisements suck. This podcast has bad words. <laughs> Hello, simpletons. Welcome to The Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus, and together we are The Minimalists. Ryan, in the modern world, it seems we have all the things we don't need, mm. and we need the things we don't have. Mm. But... We're so disconnected from our communities that bartering seems nearly impossible. Yeah. We don't even think about bartering when we're talking about acquiring goods and services. <laughs> Wait, this is about bartering? I thought it said bartending. <laughs> 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 well, we are going to talk about bartering today, and so we're here with Josh Klein. He's the founder of Have Need. It's an organization that matches the haves and the needs of people from around the block yeah. or around the world. Other Josh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Other Josh. It's a pleasure to be here. Ryan, thank yeah. you both for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you. What a, what a cool concept. Talk uh, about it. Add <laughs> <laughs> on. Um, so the background of the concept wasn't some inherent love of bartering. I, it, like I didn't grow up in a, in a you know, commune where it was all based on bartering. <laughs> bartering was not your passion? It, it, yeah, it wasn't my passion. <laughs> it, it, the, the passion was um, I came to a place a few years ago where I wanted to be in a position to uh, do something more impactful, frankly. That was it. I, I, I was uh, you know, 25 plus years into my career. It's been fulfilling, but I didn't feel like I was actually um, as my dad said all the time growing up, like leave the campground nicer than you found it. Yeah. yeah. And so that's always in the back of my head. And, and frankly, I, like my campground felt very small. What was your career? Um, I've spent most of my career working in media tech, oh, digital okay. media, production technology, review and approval systems, online systems. And, um, you know, I help people make film and TV, mm. but that's a small campground. Right. And so I just came to this place about, you know, with my skill set, because, you know, I'm not an oncologist, I'm not a nuclear physicist, I'm not going to figure out wastewater solutions. Mm -hmm. What can I do to expand that campground? How can I help people at some scale, given my skill set? And that sort of boiled down to this idea of, well, where are the broad swaths of opportunity to help people? So the next you know, couple billion internet users will be coming online via smartphones. Mm -hmm. They'll have smartphones, they'll have internet access, and they'll have little or no money. Mm. Okay, how do you help those people have a better quality of life, but make a business out of it, not not a charity? Because Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> make, make them feel worse about themselves versus everyone else. Right. We can oh, do this. Wow. Let's we'll go, make guys. Lots of money doing it. Well, let, let me let me say this real quick. I got this stat from you, Josh. Uh, last year, the BBC reported that the bartering economy is experiencing a comeback, which I would have thought the opposite during a pandemic. It's like I don't want to touch your stuff. Don't right. get around my mm. stuff. Uh, stay six feet apart, or whatever it is, and. Of course, that's probably part of it, but there's something else going on here where we understand that it's not just about exchanging currency for goods and services. Mm. Yeah, so once you get away from exchanging currency or even the ability to exchange currency, because over the last year, we've got you know tens of millions of people, 20 million people lost their jobs in the United States alone, so yeah. hundreds worldwide. Now you've got broad swaths of the population that have no money, literally have no money, yeah. no jobs, but they have needs mm -hmm. and people have the needs things. don't go away right the needs never go away mm -hmm. the money goes away the the things the stuff that people have shoved in their storage units those are still there yeah well it's bigger than ever too yeah and and people's ability to provide services are still there like maybe i've got an ability to go you know generate some income here but i need somebody to watch my kid mm -hmm. yeah things like that so what's happened over the course of this pandemic is that communities are turning towards barter. And, and of course, the pandemic raises issues about who you want to be around and who you feel safe uh, interacting with. Mm -hmm. But, you know, around the world, I mean, I've just been, you know, collecting articles from around the world over the past year about communities turning to bartering. Mm -hmm. And they find ways to do it uh, as safely as they can. 
and um, there are some pretty funny, like uh, uh, John Legend and Chrissy Teigen had something where they traded like lettuce for bread with somebody in Studio City, and they used like one of their kids' little cars, and they like push it across the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> so people okay. will find a way if you if you can generate value for value, people will find a way to do it to make their lives better. Well, yeah. We're talking about needs. So the things we need, we often mistake those for the things we want mm. or what Ryan and I we often say the things we like, which are things that we don't even want, but we think we want. Yeah. Uh, and once we get them, we realize that our desires aren't actually what we desired in the first place. In fact, the objects of our desire become the objects of our discontent tint in many ways. We have a rule. We have a minimalist rule book. Uh, you can download it at theminimalists.com slash rule book. It's 16 rules for living with less, but they're not real rules. They're just sort of like loose recipes that you can apply to your life. But one thing stands out to me, Ryan and I have this rule called the no junk rule. And, and really what we're identifying here is everything that you own can be placed in one of three piles. It's either essential. Those are the needs we're talking about, right? or it's the non-essentials, those are the wants, the things that will probably add value to our life, but they're not absolutely essential. I can get by without a coffee table, but it does add value to my life. And then there's the junk. And fortunately, just because something is junk for me doesn't mean it's going to be junk for someone else. Mm -hmm. And that's really where- One person's trash, another, another person's, person's trash. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so that's really where this, this idea of bartering uh, comes into play. Now this is a, a listener-driven show, so as we talk about bartering here, I thought maybe we would answer some questions. Ryan, we have a question from Facebook. What would the world look like if there was no such thing as money, which has a vice-like vice -like grip on the material world? That is, what would the world look like if it ran strictly on barter? And that question is from Cindy on, on Facebook. So, um, you know, these sort of absolutes are fascinating sort of thought experiments. And once upon a time, we didn't have currency. Right. Yeah. And so there was a time in Egypt. Right. You know, let's pop, you know, 8000 years ago. Mm. That's that's where we believe barter first arose for trade in Egypt. Interesting. And so, you know, economists argue whether it's the, the first form of currency or not. Um, there, there are two sides to that argument. But we know that there was bartering based on artwork from ancient Egypt. Mm. And then, you know, other cultures started traveling through Egypt and then it became harder to barter didn't actually realize I was going to rhyme until I said <laughs> it, good. but it became more difficult to barter. So th then we get the rise of currency. You know, this equals that. Right. So w w why did it become difficult? Well, if you've got somebody, uh, you know, a group going through from the Far East and they're trading silk, for instance, mm -hmm. and they're traveling through Egypt, um, if something they have isn't something you need, mm -hmm. then you don't you don't have this sort of intermediate store of value right. where you can swap these things out. So I need food. I don't, and I and I have silk. Right. But you don't need silk. Right. You need a goat. Mm -hmm. Right. So then all of a sudden we we run into this thing that that economist coined uh, the mutual coincidence of wants, mm -hmm. and this is the, you know the holy grail you've got to get past uh, for for successful scalable bartering. Yeah. So the mutual coincidence of wants is, for instance, say it's you two because it's the the, the t-shirts here. Sure. You, <laughs> you want Ryan's short sleeve t-shirt, uh -huh. but Ryan, you don't want Josh's long sleeve t-shirt. Uh -oh. Right, so I you, want a goat. <laughs> right, <laughs> so you don't share a mutual coincidence of wants. Right. So, but what if I'm here and I have a goat mm -hmm. and Josh wants this bracelet? Mm. Now, we've literally sidestepped this thing between the two of you, this mutual coincidence of wants. We've gone right around it. Yeah. And we've created a multilateral trade where um, we're able to do that now with technology. Mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult to do that uh, in an analog way. Totally makes sense. So and the larger the population gets, the harder it is for this holy grail to happen. Exactly. Yeah. And so it just doesn't scale. It's never scaled. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I, I hate to say to answer the question is, what would the world look like? Well, previously, there was just no way to even contemplate that right. because you can't conduct these transactions at any sort of scale because you keep running into, you know, bartering can be massive things like the, the tools of diplomacy, the levers of diplomacy are kind of barter, right? Sure. Hey, we're going to send in a whole bunch of human aid into your country, but in exchange, we want you to be, you know, a democratically elected. That's mm. just trading. Yeah. And... 
So it's just very complicated to address those issues um, without sort of purpose-built platforms. And so on the large scale, you know, very large businesses are able to do it in very complex ways. But on the human level, we've never been able to do it. Right. And, and so to answer Cindy's question directly is we don't need it to be binary, all currency or all bartering. Mm -hmm. One can fill in the holes where the other one doesn't work as well for you for whatever reason. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not a bartering zealot, uh -huh. right? It's like barter or bust, man. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's that, that's not where my head's at at all. The, the, if you got to pay the rent, you got to pay the rent. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there are just so many transactions where you need currency because mm -hmm. maybe your landlord to whom you're writing a rent check, he's got to pay the lease on that building. Like they're just institutions that will only accept cash, hard yeah. currency. Right. Uh, but e even there, I saw on your Facebook page, you were talking about, uh, for an exa example, if you have an electrician who can provide a, a, a service to an accountant, the accountant can then do their taxes. And so yeah. you can, there are examples of businesses that barter with each other sure. all the time. This is super common in like a uh, chiropractic world and massage therapy world. Okay. Because I, I have a really good chiropractor and I'm like, dude, you do such an awesome job. I'm like, who does this for you? And he's like, oh, I got a buddy. We trade back and forth adjustments. And okay. the same thing with, with, with massage therapy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. a one to one trade there. Right. But then you could also do it like with the plumber. Hey, if you come fix my toilet, I'll adjust your back. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And, and that, that works. That's a, that's a great example of this. Like contractors, anytime you see a truck with a magnetic sign on the side of it, right? Is that person operating at 100% labor utilization? Probably not. And there are probably things that person needs. Maybe that plumber needs a chiropractic adjustment yeah. and would be very happy to fix somebody's sink if he could get his back cracked. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And, and so what you're not saying, you're not out proselytizing bartering in the sense that this is what we should do. And it's not that it's more virtuous than currency. It's simply that it gives us the ability if we don't have the cash or if we have a, a skill or service or we simply have something we no longer need that is junk in our life, which let's be honest here. If the average household has 300,000 items and most of them are junk, yeah. we have a lot of things with which we can barter. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff. And it's funny, uh, oftentimes in conversations, I'm the one like, like spouting out these details and statistics about how much crap we've stored, but like I'm in a tough room for that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't know all the stats either, yeah, so yeah. Uh, feel free to, yeah. to pepper them in. Mm -hmm. But what is really visceral There's for people. So much crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's what's visceral. If you look around, so if you're listening to this right now, you're doing the dishes or you're on the treadmill, go into your house and just simply pause for a moment, look around. Most of the things you own, more than likely, if you're like the average American or average person in the Western world, you know, only half our audience is American, but look around your house. Mm. Most of that stuff is making you miserable. Yeah. Right. And, and, and it was and, so important the day you bought it. So important. Right. Mm. You might've saved up or gone into debt for it. Yes. And you yeah. felt it was going to fill this hole in your life. And it made it wider. And the second you got it, you turn your attention to the next thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah so the object A is what uh, the philosopher Peter Rollins talks about, where where it's the thing that we're willing to sort of set fire to our life for in order to uh, obtain. So it could be a relationship, a marriage, moving to a new city, a job, or a fancy car, whatever it is. It's like, I have to have it no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so when we're thinking about bartering or acquiring things, the first thing to think about is, do I actually need it or is it something that someone else told me that I wanted? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then I don't even need the thing in the first place and then I don't need to barter for it. But right now, when we're talking about bartering, why do you think it's becoming more and more appealing? So it, it's tapping into a few trends. Uh, one is people are broke as a joke. Yes. Right. So that's. That's one. It's so trendy to be broke right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's hit, man. Everyone's doing it. Right. <laughs> but uh, so I was broke before it was cool. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, Josh. So bef before, uh, <laughs> even before the pandemic, so a couple of statistics here. Uh, about two out of three Americans, almost two out of three Americans, couldn't absorb a $500 emergency without yeah. going into debt. Mm. So we're the richest country on the planet. And two out of three of us couldn't fix their transmission or their fridge without borrowing the money, putting it on a credit card. Mm. So that is a, a large group of people who would barter mm -hmm. given the opportunity. 
And then all of a sudden they lost their jobs. So they weren't just one paycheck away from despair. They were in despair. They were financially displaced. And so necessity is the mother of invention. Now people are looking around their communities and takes you know, all these sorts of stories about one person in a community setting up a Facebook group or uh, within the next door neighborhood for their neighborhood and setting up a little group for bartering, mm -hmm. saying, hey, I know we're all suffering right now, but we all have things and services and maybe we can help get through this. Mm -hmm. And so some of these groups very quickly, uh, you know, thousands of members jump in there because there's this like silent sea of suffering out mm. there that you know, not a lot of people brag about how shitty their lives are, right? <laughs> hey, I'm so broke, I can't afford shit. Uh -huh. So, but when, once they know, once the community makes it clear like, hey, we're all suffering, then this, this goes into this next theme, which is bartering is very community oriented. Yeah. Yes. Right. It is it is a community oriented experience. It connects you to people in your community. And at a time over the past year when sort of the underpinnings of, of what we thought our lives were were just ripped out from under us, people turn to their friends and their families and their communities for strength. Mm. And now within your community, it was OK to raise your hand and say, I'm suffering. Yeah, um, I, you know. You know, food banks are like you know being picked dry and stuff. So you, people are okay to like line up. I, I'm sure we saw the news stories. There were food banks around the country where you'd see nice cars yeah. lined up yes. yeah. for hundreds of yards or like longer. Mm -hmm. Really nice cars. People like an Alexis or something drive up to a food bank because they lost their jobs. They were paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. They were. Th this goes to stories you guys have told a lot. Like hey, I thought I needed a nice car. I thought I needed a nice house. I thought I needed that nice house filled with tons of stuff yes. and then they lost the job and they couldn't afford any of it and now they're in a line to get food at a food bank yeah. i made two hundred thousand dollars a year almost in, in dayton ohio which is you know in la what you're, is that a, a million and, yeah, yeah. yeah well except i was broke is the problem right <laughs> because i had two lexuses lex i is the plural i believe yeah, I, yes I think and yeah. and and i realized like oh i'm i'm i am still living paycheck to paycheck ryan who was making great money as well. We worked mm -hmm. at the same corporation. He was living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. And the thing you're talking about when you're driving in the Lexus through the food bank, what it it illustrates the the priority mismatch that we have in our lives. Mm -hmm. Oh, why do I buy a Lexus? Well, is to sh to telegraph who I am yeah. to other people. Joe next door has one. I want him to think that I'm doing as well as he is. Yeah, or Joe next door doesn't have one. Yeah. And that's why yeah. I really want one, right? right. Because yeah. He's got the Toyota. Yes. I have the Lexus. Yeah, I, I want the Toyota that costs $30,000 more, basically. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Swap the badge out, I feel better about myself. Right. That's exactly it. Now, I think one, one thing you're touching on here is bartering is becoming less taboo in a way because we're talking about a lot of things right now. We're talking about suffering in, in our culture. We're talking about mental health a lot more now. That was something that was really taboo to talk about. Mm -hmm. And so we had these certain taboos. That if you talk about mental health, you must be a weak person. Mm -hmm. Or if you're bartering, you must be broke. And therefore, being broke is a morally bad thing. Right. Yeah. right. Well, you're course. a bad person. You right. don't have enough money. You're a bad person. Right. right. Like, where did, that, where did that connection come from? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it, where, where I think it comes from is we are told by advertisements and corporations mm -hmm. that we should aspire to yeah. be a certain version of ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And that the quote-unquote best version of me looks like this, and that mm -hmm. person isn't broke. Mm -hmm. Right. You're making money. You've uh -huh. got two Lexi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're vacationing in Cabo. Right. All the good stuff. You're a good person. Yes, mm. uh, morally good, and, and where we confuse like pleasure with with goodness. But there's something else here that is becoming trendy that you mentioned, it, and it's that we are now wanting to reuse things, recycle things, be more environmentally responsible. Absolutely, and that's bartering why, helps. That's us. why minimalism is is becoming uh, more and more trendy because yeah. I, you know, people are seeing that it's not sustainable. We have to come up yeah. with a different solution. So, you know, things like free cycle, which has been around for however long. Now it's picking up. A now lot it's starting to pick up. Yeah. And this is why, um, this is why have need is, is starting to gain some traction too, is because I think there is a little bit of, I'm an optimist. I'm going to just say there's like a little bit of an enlightenment happen, happening. I feel like in society when it comes to consumption, I'm with you on that. Yeah. 
I, I believe, I, I think it's not hard to pick out individuals that are just shits. But I think holistically, mm-hmm. people are good. Yes. So I, I think the shits are an aberration. And I think people are trending as a, uh, holistically in a positive direction. Yeah. And to your point, that's the next big point, next big trend that influences why uh, bartering is picking up steam. Yeah. So it's not just you're broke. It's not just that you need connections back into your community that you may have lost with your screens and your devices and your insular life. Now we're all screwed. So now we're literally, we're all in this together, right? right. So that, that's community. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing that layers in with that absolutely is this sense that the way we're doing it isn't working. Mm-hmm. We're dumping, I'll probably get the stat wrong, but I think last year in America, it was like 146 million tons of crap mm-hmm. into landfills. Yeah. Right. Wow. And so that's not sustainable. No. So if I've got stuff and um, I'm not using it anymore, I can sell it. Mm-hmm. I, as you guys say, I can sell it, I can mm-hmm. donate it, or I can throw it away. Mm-hmm. But there's this other pillar mm-hmm. in there. If, if, it, if there's value stored in it that I want to extract some value from, mm-hmm. but it's not so much that I took the time to put it on eBay. Right. Right. But it's still an old iPad sitting on a shelf somewhere. It's just time is money. I haven't kind of gotten around it. Uh-huh. But I would like something for it. Um, and it may just be donating it directly to somebody I know can can use it and will improve the quality of their life. That, right. would, that would make me that's the currency sometimes I want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But also sometimes I would like something for it mm-hmm. that may not be money. So there's this kind of this silo in there yeah. where trading uh, is it's communal, it's, it's a core tenet of a, a, like a circular economy, right? So I'm done with this thing, but it's not depleted to value. So I'm right. gonna move it to you. Yeah. You've got something, whether it's a good or a service, and, and Josh, you're gonna move it to Ryan, mm-hmm. right? So I don't need it right now, maybe you need it tomorrow, maybe you need it the day after that. Yes. Now, if we live in a commune, we just put it in the middle here, right? right? right. And we go and get it, and we trust that it, it'll go back there and it won't be broken the next time I need it. Mm-hmm. So we don't live in a commune. right? And I think a way we address that is through bartering. Mm-hmm. So I need it now, because people have tried like these shared resource pools in, in small towns. People have tried um, like rental, like community, sharing or rental startups yeah. and and listen, I'm I'm not sure I've got it right either. Yeah. All I can do is point to things that haven't worked and try to do something differently. And there's a free freeloader problem there, right? Yeah. Well, they, they always talk about the chainsaw. Like that's one of those things like most people unless you're a lumberjack, you don't need a chainsaw every day, but right. you bought one. Uh-huh. And so there's value in this thing and you're not ready to just give it away cuz you know when you need the chainsaw, you need the chainsaw. Right. But some somebody borrows the chainsaw out of the community garage and then they break it. They didn't oil it, the chain breaks, and then they just, you know, late at night they're like, here it's a fucking chainsaw back. Uh-huh. And then now nobody else gets to use a chainsaw. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you've exchanged something of value with your community, um, now it's mine. Now now I it, it belongs to me now. It's yours to break. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. It's mine to break, at mm-hmm. least for now. And yeah. maybe when I'm done with it, I'll move it on to the next person who needs it. Mm-hmm. However long now is. Now it can be a, a, a moment. It can be a day. It could be a year. However long yeah. that, that period. Of, on a long enough timeline, everything is ephemeral, and you don't own any of it anyway. Totally. A- and even if you can heap it into your casket, it's not going to do you any good. Yeah, I noticed one other thing is it's also sort of because coming cool. There's this woman who is working with us on our new studio space. I can't wait to move into the new studio space, by the way. We're in a temporary spot right now. If you're watching this on YouTube, stay tuned. Real soon, we'll be in a new studio space. And she's working with us. She has this beautiful, her name is um, Beulah, uh, and uh, like the city in North Dakota. And um, not Missoula. No, no, <laughs> but Sh- rhyming. Sean's happy place. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, so uh, she has this beautiful design aesthetic. She runs this uh, garment company, clothing company called uh, Gold Morning, but it is repurposing clothes. She's probably the s- most stylish person that I know. Mm. If I look at her Instagram account, it's all, or not all, but the vast majority secondhand clothing. But it looks so much better than any brand new thing off the shelf because when you have that aesthetic sensibility. So there's also this, there's something cool about being able to 
be intentional with the things that you bring into your life. So she does a, a type of bartering where she sells old clothing online and, and does so in a way that's very intentional and it's not mass market. And so she has an e- it doesn't have an eBay store with like a thousand tchotchkes in it. Or right, something. right. It's it's like here's one blazer. It's a one of one or here's something I designed. It's a, she also does art. So she's a, she's a photographer and a painter. And and even that is is just well curated and intentional. And she's using some of those things to fund an adoption that she's going through right now. And so she's she's trying to adopt. And and in doing that, about transferring value. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And so by getting rid of some of these garments, she's no longer using or wasn't going to use. Now she is adding value to someone else's life, but it's also adding value to hers. Mm. And I think ultimately Fantastic. that's what we're talking about when we're talking about bartering. I'm going to talk to her at some point. Yeah, yeah, she's she's wonderful. She sounds has, fascinating. She really is. Ryan, what time is it? You know what time it is. It is time for the lightning round where we answer your text messages. You can text your questions and comments to 937-202-4654. Yes, indeed. Those texts go to both of our phones. We even respond to some of them. We respond to some folks on the podcast as well. So, Josh, during the lightning round, so we do our best to answer questions with a short, shareable, less than 140 character response. But not really. We just maunder on a bit. And Podcast Sean finds something beautiful, something pithy that's tweetable. I, I, I heard the word pithy thrown around a lot yes. when I follow <laughs> yeah. you guys. Yeah, so, so some sort of maxim that we put together. In fact, we call them minimal maxims. Uh, you can find them in our show notes as well or over at minimalmaxims.com. Elizabeth has a question for us, Ryan. Bartering has been around forever but seems to have fallen out of favor in recent times. Why? So I think we've covered this. A little bit, but maybe we, we can we can dig down a little bit deeper here. I have a, a minimal maxim for you. Society has encouraged us to disconnect from humanity, but humans would be better served if we disconnected from societal norms. Mm. So I think that's tweetable. I, I, really what I'm saying here is we've been encouraged to live a particular way. You're supposed to live this way, as we talked about a moment ago. And that way that we live, that societal way, being of society, being of the world, as they say, has actually disconnected us from our humanity Mm -hmm. in many ways. And I think, in a way, bartering is getting us back closer to this thing called humanity. Yeah. I'll let you expand on that, Josh. I think um, that's profound. Uh, No joke. It's a profound concept. Mm -hmm. And I think it goes back to... uh, humanity is a, a sort of an extrapolation of community mm. right like I, I could boil down to you know in my mind the meaning of life is um, to the extent that the human brain can even you know put logic to it is is to connect mm. right as far as I know I'm here for a few laps around the Sun and what what brings meaning to my life is the connections I have with other people yeah so you know currency isn't even part of that conversation right humanity around making connections with people is and it just doesn't have to be about bartering it could be like helping people yes right uh, lending a hand uh-huh. being part of somebody's life uh, adding something to somebody's life is is bettering humanity on some level that goes back to leave the campground nicer than you found it so if bartering is certainly not the end all be all for that concept but it's a part of that concept. It's, hey, we're literally all in this together, and there's a way we can, uh, without it being a donation every time from one to the other, yeah. hey, we can, we can like, lift each other up through this. We right. can all help each other. I need stuff, you need stuff, and that stuff can be, I, need, I, I would like to learn how to speak Spanish, mm-hmm. right? So I've got a dresser laying around that I don't use, and, I listening to these guys, the minimalists, they've convinced me my dresser sucks. I've got to get it out of my life. It's ruining my life. So I don't need the dresser anymore. But you speak really good Spanish and English. And so we can help each other out. Mm -hmm. And now our little corner of humanity was just elevated a tiny little bit. We're both a little better off today than we were yesterday. Right. Yeah. yeah, I like that the bartering is, is another way to help people that we never even yeah. consider. Yeah. yeah, what you were talking about, Josh, makes me think, um, and this might be pithy enough to tweet, but uh, the, more, uh, the, the more we consume, uh, the less we commune, like the, <laughs> the less community, like the, uh, oh, that's yeah. good. but there, that's there, great. there's something there with like the more, the, the, the more we, yeah, the, the more consumption, 
the less community, some, something around yeah, there. I like yeah, the your rhyme was better. I'm yeah, like, yeah, okay, that. okay, thanks. That, that was great. All right, Sean, edit all that out. And ju- <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> I'm kidding, solid. I'm kidding. Um, the, the one I have written down here is the right thing to do is rarely, is rarely the easy thing to do. And here's the thing is money is the, it's the shortcut. And that is what uh, we use money for. And whether it's to buy happiness or, or whatever it is, money is kind of the shortcut. It's what, it's what takes us away from that holy grail that you were talking about. And it, and it creates this shortcut to getting things that we need. So unfortunately, I think the reason why we're moving away from this bartering uh, uh, system is because it's, it's a lot more intentional. It's a lot harder to do in some ways. Mm. So that's what's so great about what you're doing is, is you're, you're saying, hey, um, I will put up a system that makes it a lot easier to barter. And you're kind of removing that, that barrier of entry, which is, which is fantastic. What do you mean by the right thing? Uh, w- how, did, how did I just use it? And your pithy answer. <laughs> oh, the right thing to do is rarely the easy thing to do. The, the thing that, it, well, it depends it, in, in reference to this question, mm-hmm. the right thing would be to trade goods rather than f- create new goods and consume new goods. So, uh, Increasing yeah, I, I, waste I, I, of, yeah, 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 yeah. I know that, um, there is this, th- th- this whole value judgment that can be said with that, but in relation to her question, yeah, it's, it's the, the easy thing to do is to just put out a couple bucks and get that tchotchke sure. where and throw the, the other thing away. Right. But when you do that, you are hurting the environment. You're using resources. And then now we're doing this on a massive scale. So, um, the right thing in, in that situation is to, um, consume less and contribute more basically. So what would the wrong thing be then? That's exactly what I just told you what the wrong thing was. It's to consume? The wrong, no, the wrong thing to do is to uh, endlessly use resources. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But we all use resources. Yeah, so I don't think that it's sure. wrong to, to use resources. I'm just trying to understand the, yeah, the right no, wrong that's, thing. Yeah, that's not what I, that's not what I said. I, Josh has been on this um, Zen kick lately where yeah. no value. He's, he's really trying to take away value judgments from things. So he's... Okay. I'm just trying to understand wh- what you think is right that's or Socratic wrong. Socratic method here. Right, exactly. Yeah. Are you sure you meant that? Right, exactly. Yeah. Right, exactly. Exactly. Was like I know. That, I have to be very careful. All the time. I always had to like... <laughs> Work through an answer. And yeah, I have to be mm-hmm. very careful with the words I use around Melbourne. Yeah. No, the, the wrong thing to do uh-huh. would did to be to create and consume needlessly Ooh, okay. when there's a better option. Okay. Um, do, do you need me to expound more? Or? No, I think I, I, okay, I, think cool. I understand awesome. what you're saying. Awesome. All right, cool. We got a bunch more to talk about, but first, Ryan, what do you got for us? Here are some voicemail comments and insights from our listeners. Check them out. Hi, fellow minimalists. I just wanted to leave this tip because it has been um, a recent shift in my way of thinking. On the podcast, when I used to hear people or even Josh and Ryan discussing like consuming consciously and thinking about the companies where they purchase things, I felt like that was too much work to do the research behind companies. Uh, And recently I've kind of realized that my power in a way comes from the things that I'm spending my money on um, in our current society. And so it actually seems like a very small price to pay to do the research and purchase products from places that care about the environment and that treat their employees well. uh, Because I suppose the alternative is spending money on goods and places that maybe don't care about their employees and don't treat the environment well and then if I am purchasing from them then in a way I am supporting those behaviors which don't align with my values. Hi Josh and Ryan this is Gina calling from Hershey Pennsylvania. I have a listener tip for finding free reading material for avid readers on a budget. There's the local library, which we're usually the most familiar with, but there might be other larger libraries available to you within your state. For example, as a Pennsylvania resident, you can access the materials at the Philadelphia Free Library absolutely for free, which is a much larger collection than my local library. I use an app called Overdrive and log in with my local and state library information. I have two different collections to search from. Without ever stepping foot into this library, I've downloaded countless audio and ebooks. It works just like a regular library. If something isn't available, you can place a hold and you'll be notified when it's ready. 
I'd recommend doing some research for your state to see if there are other libraries you might not have known that you have access to. All right, y'all. Thanks again to Josh Klein for joining us today. Check out Have Need. He describes it as a dating app for your stuff. It's in beta mode right now. You can download the app for free. If you put in the code minimalists, it will track so he'll know how many people came from this podcast. We don't get anything for that. But it is a bartering app that allows you to not just get rid of the things that you don't need anymore, but also obtain some of the things that you might need. So you have some things that you can list on the app, but you might need some things that you can list that on the app as well. It's called Have Need. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. Also on the Patreon episode on this Thursday, we're going to talk about the difference between Have Need and Free Cycle and Craigslist and Buy Nothing, all of which can be beneficial. So it's not like it's a competition, but we're going to talk about the differences between those different platforms. Forms. Uh, real quick for right here, right now, here's one thing that's going on in the life of the minimalist. Actually, two things because it's my birthday next week. Next Tuesday is my 40th birthday. Would you like to get me a birthday gift? Well, you can. You can get me two gifts, actually. I don't usually ask for this once or twice a year. We don't do this every episode. Please rate and review our podcast. But if you want to get me a birthday gift, you can. You can rate and review our podcast on Apple Podcast. If you get value from this podcast, it's one of the best ways to help our message reach more ears. Head on over to Apple Podcasts. Even if you don't listen on Apple Podcasts, leave us a rating and a review, and that will be the best birthday gift you can get me. Or you can also pre-order our new book. It's called Love People Use Things. I'll hold it up if you're watching this video on YouTube. It comes out in three weeks. Love People Use Things because the opposite never works. You can pre-order it right now wherever you pre-order books, your local bookstore, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or just head on over to lovepeopleusethings.net. You can find the details. You can also see the beautiful trailer that Jordan shot for the book. Lovepeopleusethings.net. It's a relationship book. It's about the seven essential relationships in our life, and it comes out in three weeks on July 13th, 2021. For our added value this week, I headed over to Apple Music, and I typed in the word need, and I found a bunch of different songs that have the word need in them, and I picked my favorite. It's a guy named J. William Henderson. One of my favorite albums of all time is called The Sun Will Burn Your Eyes. He's from Utah, which, by the way, some of the best music in the world comes out of Utah. In fact, uh, both soundtracks to both of our films were produced by a producer out there in Utah, Nate Pfeiffer, and uh, the band that he created, which is called We. But this is a song from J. William Henderson, one of my favorite musicians. This is called Maybe You Got All You Need. He has this line in there about maybe you've got all you need to fight this war. And it just made me think that a lot of us are suffering. And... We continue to suffer more because we think we need more. But maybe we have all we need already to end our suffering. This is J. William Henderson. Maybe you got all you need. We have a bunch more surprise questions this week, like how is Have Need different from the Buy Nothing Project or Free Cycle? What are some of the best examples of modern day bartering? Is there a way to screen the person you want to barter with? Plus a million more questions about the things we need, about bartering, and so much more. And if you want to hear all that, join us on The Minimalist Private Podcast this week. Visit theminimalists.com slash support to subscribe and get your personal link so that our private podcast plays in your favorite podcast app. You help keep this podcast 100% advertisement free, but when you become a supporter of the podcast, you also get access to all of our archives. So not just that extra episode every week, that longer maximal episode every week, but you get all of our archives, which there are hundreds of hours of minimalism in the archives. Some of the best conversations we've ever had, you can find there, theminimalists.com slash support. You can follow The Minimalists on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at The Minimalists. Come to one of our live podcast shows. Visit theminimalists.com slash tour to find a city near you. If you have a question, comment, or minimalism tip, email a voice memo to podcast at theminimalists.com comment on this episode youtube.com slash the minimalist if you want our show notes in your inbox sign up for our email list over at the minimalists.com you'll also receive 
any new minimalist writings that we publish. Simple Sunday email. We send that out whenever we have something new to communicate, any new minimalist writings. And if you leave here today with just one message, let it be this. Love people and use things because the opposite never works. Thanks for listening, y'all. Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing that's just feeding your greed Oh, I bet that you'd be fine without it